nobody actually expects to have a, a brother send you off to school and uh, that would be the day that you would never see him ever again. My brother was a helicopter co-pilot. He worked at the Singapore Air Force. So he was on a routine exercise, a helicopter uh, over the South China Sea. And there were three other servicemen who were in that helicopter when there was an accident. That was my first experience uh, in front of a coffin that never was opened because we were told that he was so beyond recognition. And I remember just that loss was so sudden, it was so traumatic. And uh, you really, we were all in a daze, didn't quite know what to feel. We went along, you know, trying to cope. And uh, two years after Sam died, um, those were the last two years I had with my mom before she was very shortly diagnosed with colon cancer. And uh, she died. On the, on the 5th of May, 1991, and that was exactly one day after I got married. When I was back in Singapore, I got hired by Lear Burnett Singapore, and there I met this young man uh, called Moses. He was a graphic designer there. Got to know him, and after a year we were dating. Strong man in the faith, with a name like Moses, you really can't help but be that. It was a very wonderful relationship right from the beginning. So a year into our dating, Moses uh, and I were having dinner and we went to the pier and we started talking like we always did. And one day I just asked him, I said, you know, what did you do for your national service? It didn't occur to me then, but Moses was the same age as my brother Sam. And uh, Moses said, oh, very routine, boring stuff. I was in the, with the Navy, uh, except for one incident back in 1982, just before Chinese New Year. I sat up right away and they said, we're all gonna get deployed into the middle of the South China Sea to look for a downed helicopter. My heart froze when he said that. I didn't have the question, I didn't have the courage to ask him. But he didn't know. He didn't know what my connection was uh, to the airmen. And so he kept on going. And he said, I remember we were the ones that had to go down, put the, the three national servicemen on the stretcher and bring them back up. And as he was doing that, he said, I felt I felt the weight of what the family must have been feeling. And he said, you know, it was, it was a very difficult moment, but I just felt that the family would probably need some prayer. After putting the bodies away, he had to clean the stretcher. And so he had a lot of time and he was trying to clean this flesh that was stuck under the, the, the stretcher and he was cleaning that and he said, I kept praying for this family. After he told me that, it became real for me, my grief that I didn't uh, feel for many, many years. It became real. And what's more than that, God's love became real because I was so sure that God didn't love us, didn't care about my family by letting us experience this horrible trauma. Why would a good God do that to my brother? And he wanted to be a pastor. After being back in Singapore, Moses was diagnosed with lung cancer. He had a very grim prognosis. He was given six months left. Moses died on the first Sunday uh, of 1997, it's on the 5th of January. It took me three deaths to really understand how to grieve. We're always looking for the meaning in, in, in dying, in being away from our loved ones. And I think it was this third death that I think God was showing me that in suffering, you don't really have any answers. Uh, nothing will be satisfactory. 
what I've learned in suffering is that uh, there is a God who understands what real suffering is. You can have all the reasons and you can have all the, the understanding, but nothing actually helps you through suffering than to have a person go through it with you. We all have a choice. Uh, my choice in looking at Christ because he understands, he came to this earth to suffer. He's both man and God, and he understands my pain in a way that in leaning on him, I understand that there is a joy that is waiting for us as we go through this pain together. We don't need to feel the separation, both from the people we love and those people who've gone ahead of me, We've all witnessed the same things, that Christ coming to give us this gospel and give us this new life. And I'm glad to say I have not lost that hope. <laughs>